So there, we're going to do another Mag.js tutorial. Um, as always, we start from the home page at GitHub. Um, and we start with one of the boilerplates. Um, today, we're going to start with the new boilerplate for Plunker. This is using the modular or module pattern in JavaScript. And the example we're going to work on today is going to be very specific to um, React actually. This is going to be a, a React to Mag JS example. And um, what we're going to be doing has to do with uh, child hier hierarchy and state. So why don't we check that out? So again, we're just starting with the Plunker um, boilerplate using the module pattern. So this one's a little more complicated than um, you know, some of the other boilerplates and some of the other things in general. Um, as you can see here, some, you know, just suggestions about using the, you know, JavaScript module pattern and things like that. Um, it loads right away with um, the add-ons and the comps that require the add-ons. Uh, Picnic uh, CSS, which is always nice, and the comp CSS. I don't know if we're going to use that, actually. And then just kind of a hierarchy of modules and, and kind of an explanation how to use it. So why don't we walk through that real quick. So in the app init, you just have a single initializer. And that initializes your parent. So all your modules are underneath one parent. It's like a hierarchy, like XML. And within that, you'll have other modules. And you could have components as well. And the only difference between a module and a component is that a module is something that houses or utilizes a component, and a component is completely agnostic and independent. It really doesn't care where it is, and it can be used multiple times. Um, one thing I would just you know note um, is that we have here this parent one that's calling a child, and this is just like an example. And just note how the properties are being passed for click events for properties that are sent down to be sent back up. So notice the prop things actually came from the parent, which initialized it here, and then passed it down here. And then it's getting it back on the click. So we can just kind of look at what that's doing. It's just doing a little simple count. As you can see here, using the state, and as I click it, it's just incrementing. All right, so why don't we look at our example of what we want to actually do. All right, so the first thing I always do is create a fork of the boilerplate. The next thing I'm gonna do is show the example that we wanna work with. So this is uh, an article on React.js and about dynamic children. You know, uh, when you have children that are getting new content or maybe being cloned or, or maybe just changing, you know, whether it's a stored order or things like that, and just explaining why the keys are so important in those cases. And the same thing holds true for Mag.js as well. So in this really simple example, um, and I'll, I'll have this link, um, I'll just keep it here in the readme file so you can take a look at that. Call it React to Mag. This is all about uh, hierarchy, component, dynamic, key, state. Kind of a subject matter. But specifically, we're going to be doing a tab list, as we're going to see in this example. So just talking about the, the issue about initial state, you know, being defined with children that are dynamic, that are going to be called again and again. And if you don't have a key, it's going to basically reintroduce it. So in this really simple example, you have two countries, and you have cities under each country. So Canada has these two cities, and I click Poland, it has these two cities. So the issue is, these are two separate lists. Okay, and here you can just take a quick look at the code. You can see here there's two separate lists. You have one tab list here. So this is the parent, and it's calling this component in the, as a child, and it's calling two siblings side by side. So the first one is just the countries. And the second one is the cities in the country, the one underneath it, the second row. So uh, 
when you click Canada and then I click Quebec, the city, what happens when I go to Poland? You see, it selected the second one for Poland too. Okay. And the reason for that is really simple actually. See, the active state here is being maintained, but it's not being specific to this instance. So you see there's no keys over here. I don't have any keys. So when I click Canada, Quebec, now I go back to Poland. See, Canada is the Quebec selected. Once I go to Poland, and I click Warsaw. Now if I go back to Canada, can you guess which one is going to be selected? There you go, Ottawa. So basically the bottom one state is being maintained as one instance, as one global instance. So there's one global instance for each thing here. But the reality is we want two instances for the lower one. We want one instance for when it's Poland, and we want one instance for when it's Canada. And the way to do that is basically create a dynamic key. And the key will be unique to each of those instances, such as country key, one being Poland, one being Canada. That's the basic solution. So why don't we walk through that um, MagJS. So why don't we always start usually in a template. Um, so the first thing in our template is going to be really simple. We're just going to create it's a, a little app here. And we don't need to hide it. Um, we have those two lists that we just talked about. So the first list is country. And the second list is city. And then we have our component itself, the tab list. Now that we do want to hide. And the simplest way to hide it is actually using uh, a template. Literally, the XML, there's a template like this. And what that does is basically hides it so it's not visible. It's like a, I guess you would say HTML5. Uh, basically for document fragments to put into uh, HTML. It's accessible the same way. Alright, so that's our, our component template, which we want to be injected in here and here. So the first thing to do is probably create our parent container that's going to house uh, our countries. So I guess we would call this a countries component, but we're just going to put it into the parent controller. And the first thing we're going to need is probably the active country and the active city. So why don't we just do that first? All right. So just uh, let's say, let's do it like this: active country. What is default? This is gonna be city. Um. Let's see what else. Let's go to our view for a second here. In our view, why don't we start first with just showing the countries. So to do that, we need to do a few things. First of all, in our initializer, why don't we create some uh, data? Why don't we pass in the countries? And we might as well do the city per country too. We'll have that just ready. And we need our props. How's it all? And we can just pass it right in here. Alright, looks good. Alright, so let's see what else. Um, let me just do one more thing. I'm going to change the ID of this guy. This guy, this is just based on our styles that we have for this example that we're going to use. But our initializer looks good. 
And the only thing we're missing now is our tab list component. So why don't we create that before we can really inject it? So let me rename this tab list. Let me get rid of this guy. I don't need that. Less clutter, I always say. And why don't we rename our parent to why not? Uh, we should probably rename it based on country's component. So it's going to be something like this. There we go. That looks good. That's the parent. We have our initializer. Alright, so now we're ready to make our tab list. So this is going to be our tab. I don't think there's any props in this, so I think we're good just without that. We definitely are going to want a controller though. I'm going to do that. This is going to house our active state. So, you know, this is like in uh, React, this would be your initial state setter. All right, so I think we're good with that. So, why don't we look at our template to get an idea of what we really want to create? And also, we can probably set up our initialization here. Let me just do it at least for the country. So let's take that. I think it was country list, right? Equals. And then we have our name, which is basically going to be this guy, but tab list instead. So we like this. And then we're just going to pass in the props like that. So I think the main prop we want to pass in is probably the items. If we're passing in our properties already, we set that up just like that. So I think that should get us at least started once we finish the tab list guy here. So going back to the tab list, so all he's going to do is iterate through those items and set the list. See, he's got a list here. So he's going to set his list, he's got an A tag. And that's about it. So it's pretty straightforward. So that's always good. All right, so why don't we do that? Save that list. It's going to loop through some stuff here. He's going to equal the A tag. So this is where Mag.js shines. So we're, we have a list container, and then we have A as our template. And whatever we array we put into A, it's going to repeat over and over and over. So that's why we don't just say list, we say list A. Items, map, function, item. And here, we can return our specifics, such as you know class names for our highlighting, uh, text on click events, etc., etc. So why don't we just start with the text being the item. Let's see what else we got going here. Well, you know, we can change our include file names down over here, did we? Why don't we do that? Right, so the first name is this guy. The second one, I think it's just tab list. Yeah. I need to copy and paste that guy. All right, I think we should be good now. Let's see. Uh, let's see.
with that. All right, let's see. Yeah, tab list ID. Let me put this guy. What do I have? I had it as a div ID equal template as equal high, I believe. Okay, just to make things just simple. Okay, and there you go. We have our two countries. You know, we are missing the same kind of styling that we had in the other one. Let's see if we can find that somewhere here. Why don't we just grab this here for a second? Create a little style sheet. Oh, let's see this. Include it. I don't think we need this guy. All right, let's see how that looks. All right, that looks a little better. All right, so we don't have any click event yet. We didn't add that. Why don't we do that and add a little click event? And also some classes. That would probably be good. So this is a Mag.js add-on called class name, which allows you to add and remove classes um, to an existing class or a non-existing class but it won't override existing ones. So it's not just like underscore class, it's a special one. So I think what we're gonna do here is we have two class names. We have one that's called excited, which is when it's basically active. So based on the index, if state.active equals that, use that. So basically if it's true, that's what it does. Or I is not equal to state.active. Okay, so basically, you see what it's doing there? Okay, so I think the last thing we want to do is create our onclick handler. We might need an href because it is a, a tag. So well, first, why don't we just do this? Let's get our a. Event. And our A is just going to be the index, which we're going to bind it. State I. And this will state that active equals A, that index. And we're going to call up the chain and click handler. Click the item, the index, and the event. You know, that's why we need our default props. Okay, so when you're creating a comp and you have any props you want overwritten, you also need to create a default just in case it's not overwritten yet. So it doesn't throw an error. Okay, there you go. All right, so we have basic highlighting going on here, which is all nifty, but I think what we really want to do is show those countries and cities. So why don't we go back to our component over here. I guess we want to do the same thing, but we're going to do it for our city list. And instead of props countries, we're going to do uh, is it? cities per country. Is our state active country index? And, you know, we probably also want to load the current country based on our props dot countries. And we need to do that handler event, don't we? Uh, is that handle click? 
All right, so there's our handle click function, and he's going to be called back by the property that we send. This guy there. Now note the cities are showing up and, and not uh, the countries. Okay. Um, so what's happening there is basically it's being overwritten and it's not being cloned. So if we just put a true in here, it will clone it like this. And there you go. So now you have the cities on the bottom and the countries at the top. So it's making two of them, not just one, basically is the point. So why don't we see here? Um, let's see. So now when I click Canada, it gets highlighted and it shows me Canadian cities. I click New York, it shows me the, or USA, it shows me the USA cities. You notice it's not highlighting Canada, not right away at least. So I think what we need to do for that is our active flag. This is basically just paint, passes it back to the chain. That's all we have our click handler to get the type of country, prevent default, all that good stuff. And this way, it knows which one is to highlight it. Now, why don't we look back at the problem again? So the problem was, when I clicked a different city, it selected that same index on the other country, even though the other country was Ottawa. See, it moved it there. So let's see if we have the same problem. Now, in the USA, I'm going to click Detroit. Go to Canada. You know what we're missing also is the active. All right, here. There we go. Okay. Let's try that again. Round two. In USA, I click Detroit. Okay, there we go. All right, so we have our click handlers in place for both our city and our country. We have the active state of each of the lists, and we have the items being passed to that component. Now, when I click Detroit, I go to Canada, it's selecting Toronto. I go back to USA, it's still at Detroit, all right? So it's basically the same index is being selected for both. So now if I click, see USA is Detroit, if I click Ontario, it's going to be New York, see? So this is the same exact issue in React, right? And what we need to do here is we need to create a key. So the first key we're going to create is for our countries, country list. And it's just good practice to always create keys in general. Um, and over here, we're also going to create another key. But this is a different key. See, this key is going to tell it the current country. And that means we're going to have two different instances being generated. One for the USA and one for Canada. So now, in USA, when I click Detroit, then I go to Canada. It says it there, right? If I come back, click Ontario. It says it there too. Hmm, very interesting. <laughs> oh, see, it's not this. It's state. Sorry about that. So yeah, state is in here, and this is over there. 
Let's try that again. Okay. So let's look back at our issue. The issue is whatever selected carries over to the other one. So now if I select the other city in Poland, the one on the right, in Canada it's selected too. But now that we have our own keys in both places, I click Detroit in USA, and I click Ontario here. See, it didn't select. See, now they're on different indexes for each one. So what it's basically doing is because it has two different keys, we have two different instances being generated of this one, but only one instance of this one. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed it. I will have the link to this saved in the video. Um, thank you very much. Until next time.